are watching Bengals Breakdown by Chat Sports. I am your host, Stone Shields. Thank you so much for joining us. Just getting wrapped up with our second watch party of the year. And we had a great time, but unfortunately, it was a pretty ugly outing for the Bengals as they go to Chicago and fall to the Bears 27-3 at Soldier Field. Obviously, by the score, you could tell that the offense was really just non-existent for this one. I thought we saw some. Decent things from Logan Woodside. Certainly wasn't as good as his performance last week against Tampa Bay, but we'll touch on that a little bit more. Also, Caleb Williams kind of showed why he was the number one pick at the end of the first half. And again, we'll talk about him a little bit more in detail as we go forward. But the Bengals fall 27-3. to um, Pretty ugly on the scoreboard there for Cincinnati. It was a pretty ugly game, really, unfortunately, for the Bengals as they go to Soldier Field and, again, lose to the Chicago Bears. But make sure you guys are subscribed to our channel here at Bengals Breakdown because we will be live for every single Bengals game. Like I said, we still had a lot of fun at our watch party, but really it's only up from here, and I don't anticipate ever getting that much of a downer this year from the Bengals going to Chicago, losing 27-3. I really don't envision Cincinnati struggling like this during the regular season. Obviously, it's a preseason game. Things happen. That's just the way it is. It's not about winning and losing in the preseason. It's just about getting better. But uh, make sure you guys do subscribe to our channel, youtube.com slash Bengals TV, so you don't miss any of our Bengals coverage. All right, my first takeaway was I thought the defense started really strong in this game for Cincinnati. Caleb Williams really strong. I believe he went three, and the Chicago Bears offense went three and out their first three drives. The Bengals' second team defense was really out there flying around, making a lot of plays. And they really started out really strong. If you remember, this game was 0-0 for a long time. So I thought the Bengals' second-string defense really did a nice job out there. We did see some D.J. Turner and Dax Hill as that cornerback two battle kind of takes its next step. But I um, thought overall the Bengals there saw, saw some good plays. Chris, Chris Jenkins, their second-round pick out of Michigan, had a sack after he really struggled against Tampa Bay last week, so that was certainly good to see. But overall, really happy with how the defense started the game. Here's what Caleb Williams did. You look at the stat sheet, he didn't really do much, but it was towards the end of that first half. Those last couple of drives, he got bailed out by the questionable pass interference call against, against Josh Newton. But that uh, throw he had down the sideline to Adunze was spectacular, and then really his rushing touchdown was really unbelievable as well he just kind of kept dancing and dancing and buying time and eventually wiggled his way out of there out of there and was able to score on foot for Chicago so it was pretty impressive by Williams at the end kind of flashed that first overall pick um you know attributes there towards the end of the first half but the Bengals really did a good job keeping him in check earlier in the game so grade the Bengals versus the Bears. Uh, grade their performance for us in the comment section. It is the pinned comment of today's video. So if that ad comes here on YouTube, that's totally fine. Get down there and let us know what you think. It was funny. I started at like a B, and then I was like, okay, this clearly isn't a B. And then I went to a C very quickly off after that a D. And I kind of was debating between D and F, but I kept it at D. Saw some good things early on, especially defensively. So uh, let us know what you think. Grade it for us in the comment section. Another takeaway I had, Jermaine Burton was out returning kicks. This wasn't something that I expected. I didn't even really consider it being a possibility, but he was out there returning kicks and punts for the Bengals, and he had a 29-yard average when it came to his kick returns um, in his two attempts, so that really is pretty eye-opening right there for you. Again, he didn't do this at Alabama. I haven't heard the coaching staff talk about him potentially doing this, but it like makes a lot of sense. It's a good way to kind of ease him into getting some meaningful reps, especially if Charlie Jones is still banged up. I was expecting him to play today. He did not, but um, he's really the Bengals' go-to punt returner. But if he, for some reason, isn't going to be 100% by week one, you could potentially throw Burton out there, and he could do a good job. Didn't do as much in the punt return category, but uh, he certainly was a, a problem for the Bears as far as a kick returner goes. Did leave the game kind of grabbing his back. Um, I don't think it was anything serious, but we'll certainly keep you updated if we have more information on, on that. Muma Jong Meta. We talked about how he was one of our 10 players to watch going into this game. And he was a guy that really needed to back up his performance from last week to kind of assert himself as a real candidate to make this team. And I thought he did very much of the same. He wasn't quite as good, but he was flying around, made a ton of plays for the Bengals defensively at that linebacker position, had eight tackles, a lot of which were solo tackles as well. He's a hard hitter. 
really athletic guy, really big guy for a linebacker. So really pleased with the Bengals got out of Muma Jong Meta today. And I think they could potentially uh, have a guy that's going to be meaningful on their roster in Muma Jong Meta going forward. And um, at this point, I'm ready to say he's going to make the team for the Bengals. When you look at all their other kind of guys in competition for that fifth linebacker spot, Shaka Hayward, Aaron Casey, to name a few, I think Jong Meta has certainly separated himself from that group. And I expect the, uh, him to make the roster for the Bengals. But again, he'll have to play well next Thursday night to kind of solidify what he's done to this point. Want to give a shout out to our friends over at Fanatics and let you guys know that Amarius Mims rookie jerseys are available over at Fanatics. Unfortunately, he's a little banged up right now. He might be back for the start of the season. We'll see. Of course, Zach Taylor's saying he'll be out for several weeks. Not exactly sure what that time frame is specifically. But go and get your Amarius Mims rookie jerseys courtesy of our friends at Fanatics. That's chatsports.com slash Amarius Mims. And that link will be in the comments and the description of today's show so get you an Amarius Mims rookie jersey right now okay so the offense was pretty brutal today for Cincinnati um I don't want to uh you know go after Logan Woodside too much because I thought he did some good things for the Bengals um statistically 17 to 25 for 132 yards I thought he was really tough out there for him he really took some big shots in this game for the Bengals you see the two interceptions First one really wasn't got his fault. He got absolutely drilled as he was letting it go. Ball kind of floated up in the air. Chicago comes away with it. Second one, that way, that route kind of got undercut, but uh, that wasn't a good throw there by Woodside. So um, I really liked his toughness. Um, certainly didn't play as well as he did last week against Tampa Bay, but I think he also set, uh, made a case for definitely being the third-string quarterback for Cincinnati. Rocky Lombardi struggled pretty significantly today. I liked what I saw from Woodside, and I by no means blame this performance on him offensively. There were a lot of other issues. Yeah, he could have played better. Yeah, he could have checked into better protections. But um, Logan Wilson wasn't, or uh, Logan Woodside wasn't horrible. Noah Kane, first time we really called his name. He's kind of that RB5 for Cincinnati now with Chris Evans out. Thought he did some good things. Stats don't really jump out at you crazy, but the Bengals definitely ran the ball better today than they did last week. Travion Williams is certainly a part of that as well. Six carries for 22 yards. He was a guy that the Bengals kind of look at as a kick return guy, but they had Jermaine Burton playing that uh, spot today for Cincinnati. So we'll see when the regular season gets here who will be back returning kicks. But I thought Travion Williams was solid. Liked what we got from the running backs today. Obviously, Zach Moss and uh, Chase Brown did not play for Cincinnati. Kwame Laster led the team in receiving five yard, or five receptions for 33 yards. Um, I felt like we were calling his name a lot. I felt like I felt that way a lot last week. The Bengals just kind of going his way a lot. Um, has been a good practice squad member for Cincinnati. He's not going to make the team unless somebody gets hurt, of course. But um, he's a guy that uh, very much the Bengals would love to keep on their practice squad again this year. And if someone gets hurt, maybe he gets an opportunity to get called up and make an impact. But Kwame Laster was pretty solid. Uh, Burton only had one catch for Cincinnati, but it did go for a first down. It was a big uh, a big catch there from Woodside, 19-yarder. So really like what I'm seeing with Burton. Again, hopefully he's not too banged up, was grabbing his back there um, around halftime, somewhere around that point. And, um, yeah, I think the Bengals absolutely got a great receiver in Jermaine Burton and excited to see his role continue to grow. I think they'll start with him just kind of being in some sub packages. But eventually that role will continue to grow for him, and he'll be a big part of this Cincinnati Bengals offense. So what is your one-word reaction to the Bengals versus the Bears? Let us know in the comments section what that is. Were you ticked off? Were you, do, do you see the kind of are you glass half full guy? Just let us know what you think. One word for us in the comments section of today's show. Lastly, another takeaway for me, this defensive line is just going to continue to worry me, right? Because I don't think that this group um, is really that good. I mean, to be completely honest with you, I know it seems a bit harsh, but I think the Bengals are really going to struggle in the run game, stopping the run this year, as well as getting some pressure on opposing quarterbacks from that interior. And, um, you know, today – did okay, but I think it's just going to be a concern throughout the entirety of the year for me at that defensive line position for Cincinnati. So something I'm certainly going to have a close eye on, and we're going to monitor every single week and kind of just recap, okay, how did the defensive line look today? That's going to be what we're doing every single week throughout the season. Again, Bengals fall 27-3 to against the Chicago Bears. Luckily, 
It's just a preseason game, so this doesn't mean anything. They got some valuable reps. Hopefully they got more out of the joint practice than they did out of this preseason game, but Zach Taylor will be interesting to hear his comments after the game, see exactly what he thought went down for the Bengals, but they do fall 27-3, to and be on the lookout for our winners and losers video that will come out tomorrow. Thank you.